Hello, my name is Caleb Usadi. I'm a second year undergraduate at the University of Vermont. I worked this past summer with the Del Maestro group to develop a more compact representation for bosonic occupation states. My research was supported by the NSF and by the University of Vermont Physics Department. My research is concerned with modeling the states of systems of particles on optical lattices. At super cold temperatures, these systems become a set of potential wells, which can provide information about extreme states of matter like superconductors and superfluids. Also, potentially, these systems allow you to store and configure quantum states for the sake of quantum computing. Also, analysis of the wave functions of these systems provides information about their properties, such as their ground state energies. A crucial detail in these systems is that they may either be systems of fermions or systems of bosons. In the case of fermions, you may only have one particle occupying a site, and in the case of bosons, there is no restriction on the number of particles that can occupy a site. You, because you can only have one fermion per site, there are far fewer configurations than for bosons. In the case of two particles on three sites, as shown here, you can have three configurations if the particles are fermions and six if the particles are bosons. A more dramatic example would be 10 particles on 10 sites. If the particles are fermions, there's only one configuration of one particle on each site. But if the particles are bosons, there are over 90,000 configurations of particles on these sites. Representation of the fermionic basis vectors is intuitively very memory efficient. A site may either be occupied or unoccupied, which lends itself easily to a binary representation, with occupied sites being represented with ones and unoccupied sites represented with zeros. So in the case of two particles on three sites, the first example given in the previous slide can be represented as one 64-bit integer, 110, or six in base 10. Bosonic basis vectors don't have this intuitive binary representation because you don't have the restriction of zeros and ones. Traditionally, these systems are represented as arrays of integers where you have one 64-bit integer for each site, which means that there's an additional scaling factor of the number of sites in the system. We borrowed the stars and bars representation. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Ah, we borrowed the stars and bars representation from combinatorics to reduce this factor of the number of sites and again represent each basis vector as a single 64 bit integer, as was done with fermionic basis vectors. The idea of this representation is that you can represent the borders between sites with ones and the particles within the sites as zeros. So in a way, it's a visual representation. There's a couple important distinctions to allow understanding of it. For example, the leading one is dropped because it's redundant across every configuration and it's read from right to left. So you can see that the first particle on the far left is represented as the zero on the far right. The two barriers next to it are represented by two ones. The following two zeros represent the two particles and the three bars are represented by the three ones. This reduces the size of each basis vector by that factor of the number of sites, which allows each basis to be represented as a single 64-bit integer. We implemented this using the Julia language. When looking at the memory use of these systems, the expected 
size of it is the number of basis vectors represented by the number of sites plus the number of particles minus one choose the number of particles minus one which provides the expected memory as seen by the solid lines on the chart to the left which is the number of basis vectors multiplied by 64 bits for each basis. In the case of the Yudzinski basis, you have an additional factor of the number of sites, which explains the difference. Although there's a little bit of initial overhead for computational demands, ultimately as systems get larger, the, the experimental memory for generating the basis vectors matched very closely the theoretical value from the number of basis vectors. Additionally, there was a small speed up when using the stars and bars representation over the traditional Yezinski basis, but that is kind of a side effect of computational efficiency. Now, having an efficiently encoded basis, you can then start to ask questions about the properties of those systems as explained earlier. The systems are described by the Bose-Hubbard-Hamiltonian, which is just a representation of the total energy of the system. So the factor on the left is the kinetic energy and the element on the right is the potential energy. You can see B and BDAG are the creation and annihilation operators of particles on sites and N is the number of particles on a given site. The Hilbert space then is the set of vectors that you obtain from solving this Bose-Hubbard Hamiltonian. Solving for the eigenvalues of the matrix that you obtain can then provide the ground state energies of the system. Now, this system scales by the square of the number of configurations, which means it scales extremely rapidly as we've seen system size grows logarithmically as well. You can utilize translational symmetries to reduce the size of this matrix because changing it based on symmetries does not ultimately change the ground state energies or the wave function. So in the first example with two particles on three sites, the full six may be represented by only two configurations. Two particles on a site shifted twice to the right and one particle on a site, one particle on a site, and an empty site shifted twice to the right with periodic boundary conditions, which allows it to loop back around to the first site. Looking at the memory use for the sparse Hamiltonian generation is validating when utilizing the symmetries, and as well, the memory use for stars and bars correlates very closely to the memory use for the Yezinski basis, which is to be expected because there's very little of a computational change when working with stars and bars. The significant difference is that there has been such a speed up and memory save with generation of the basis vectors. With the implementation of the symmetries, however, you see a dramatic reduction in the memory cost for the generation of the Hamiltonian. The applications of this are very significant. It allows you, in our focus, to look at the entanglement entropies of these systems. And as you can see on the right, entanglement in the state of the art experiments measured over time is limited to very small systems. The figure A shows that there are nine particles used in the most sophisticated experiment we can realize in a laboratory. Now, with these larger system sizes, we can model larger experimental systems on a computer. Thank you.